Hey y'all, what's up? It's Kim Nonstop. Still here, still preggers, and this is probably my last video before I am a mom. This is gonna be a concise rundown of how my exercise routine and training routine changed throughout these nine months. See, there is an upside to me not having been making videos this entire time in that you're gonna get my entire pregnancy, workouts, and training condensed into one video. That's it. Let's get to it. Before we dive right in, I just want to say that this is what I did during my pregnancy to keep my fitness up and to feel good. And I'm not saying it's what you should do or your partner should do. I'm saying this is what I did. And maybe some of these suggestions might be helpful for you. I am pre-postnatal certified. I am a NASM certified trainer. However, this is not prescriptive. And I hear multiple times a day that all pregnancies are different and you know what works for me may not work for you. I'm also not advocating that we have to stay as fit as we were before we were pregnant. That's not what I'm saying. This was me just literally keeping a base level of fitness that I felt good about and really just to make myself feel better the whole time. Okay, first trimester, I was sick, Blah. like just, I, it was awful. But I decided to cram in a trip to Mallorca to go cycling. Was pretty nauseous and green the whole trip, but got some really good riding in. Cycling was something I was very much able to do. I had actually started showing pretty early on. Definitely had a belly by 12 weeks, like a small belly. But this wasn't, it wasn't big enough to weigh on my bladder or keep me from pedaling. Intuitively, I wanted to just lay in bed and give up because I felt so sick, like just really terrible. I couldn't eat anything. I just felt, I felt awful. And I was messaging some of my friends who had recently been pregnant. Meg Squats was, said something really helpful to me. She's like, you have to do the things that you really don't want to do. Eat, exercise. It's counterintuitive, but it will make you feel better. And she was right. So actually, they, I didn't want to eat anything because I was so nauseous. So I would go for walks or go ride my bike. And as I'm riding, the normal hunger cues of bonking, stuff like that, you know, feeling a little uh, hunger, feeling hungry or feeling dizzy or feeling a little out of it, those cues were helpful to me to be like, okay, I need to eat. Because when I was home, I was so sick, I just like didn't eat. Cause I was like, I can't, I, food looked disgusting to me. RX bars, this is not sponsored, but they got me through um, the fact that no food looked appetizing and RX bars kind of don't even look like food. <laughs> they don't, don't smell like anything. It's, clearly this is not sponsored, but they have a pretty good nutrition profile and uh, if you're not vegan, they have, because they have some egg in them, but dates are really good for energy and supposed to be great for pregnant women in their third trimester, so. Ate some RX bars while I'd ride. I started with shorter rides and I realized it was helping. I'd eat more while I'm riding and I felt less sick. So then I started going on longer and longer rides and it, sometimes I was doing 80 to 100 miles. Plus it got me out and seen my friends and made me feel more normal. So that was just like a mood lifter. It got me to eat, it got me to feel better. So all of that stuff, I can't uh, stress enough how much cardio, long endurance cardio helped me in my first trimester. trimester comes around, that's when I started to have to pee more often. So going on 80 to 100 mile rides, unless there were bathroom stops, um, unless it was in a remote part of the woods, both of those things are really hard to find in Los Angeles. There's the Los Angeles National Forest, that's pretty great. But being able to just like pop a squat anywhere when there's not a hiker around or someone around or a cop to give you a ticket for peeing in a bush, I actually did that. Yeah, it's hard. So I started to plan my rides around bathroom breaks. 
So my rides became shorter simply because of the bladder situation, uh, not because of any discomfort. Cycling was still very comfortable for me. And then I did lifting, so I was already lifting before, so they say whatever you're doing before, they say, doctors, medical professionals say whatever you're doing before, you can continue throughout your pregnancy. Olympic lifting is something I'd started at the beginning of the pandemic, so I had a good year, some time under my belt of doing that. And so I found a gym where I could do it near my work. And yes, I wouldn't push to my one rep max anymore. That was not something I was aiming for. Again, listening to my friend Meg Squats, who is a power lifter, I was working closer around like 70% of my capacity. Um, and some people, you know, will will say to you, like if I posted on social media, they'd be like, why are you lifting so much? And I'm like, this is not a lot for me. You have to keep in mind that I was doing this before at 200 plus pounds. Now I'm doing it at 170 pounds or whatever. So I scaled back on the weight, but I still did the work and it felt great. And during the cardio sessions, uh, the short bursts, like intense intensity was working for me. I got my heart rate up to about 160, uh, 170 sometimes, and it's okay. I'm listening to my body. It's, it's a place where my heart rate would be prior to being pregnant, um, in fact, higher. So I kept it a little bit lower. And those moments, I would, you know, always wear my watch and see when my heart rate was the highest and, you know, make sure I didn't, you know, it didn't stay elevated for extended periods of time and that I was hydrated and that I wasn't dizzy, you know, just very much listening to my body and what it was capable of. Oh, I also modified core pretty early on in like the second trimester. I also removed hanging movements, um, hanging like leg lifts and pull-ups. It just felt too stretched. So again, it, it was really me just listening to my body and if it felt like it wasn't okay, then I wouldn't do it. Like doing a plank on the floor, I noticed that my stomach was coning and that's something if you're pregnant you want to watch out for because it just means that you're putting stress on that abdominal wall that doesn't need to be there and you're not properly supporting. So if your belly looks like this instead of, you know, round. Um, so when I'm doing a plank I would like look down and check. And I would be like, hmm, it's coning. All right, I'm gonna go to my knees. I'm gonna do the plank on my knees. Or I'm gonna do bird dog. There's so many other moves that can be done to train the core. There's so many moves that can be done to train your body. There's no reason to force it. And so yeah, I did, you call that kind of CrossFit style is what that gym was doing. That's what the workouts I would do about three to four times a week. And then riding shorter miles. The one other thing about cycling that did change is that I always had snacks on me. Had to pack snacks in like a handlebar bag or my pockets um, could not leave the house without snacks because you just never know when your body is needing that energy so um, RX bars fruit dates nuts all that stuff luckily I didn't really have to change a lot I didn't have to modify a lot of moves I didn't have to change my bike setup I didn't have to change my lifting except for scaling back on the weight just a little bit all through my second trimester. So that got me to my third trimester, the tail end of my second, third trimester. That's when I had to start making more changes. My belly is in the way now. I'm heavier and now I really have to pee every 15 minutes. Cycling is even harder because you know, it's just, it's time in the saddle. I can do trainer workouts and I can go outside if I know that I have a bathroom to ride to. So a lot of times I will plot my route to a bathroom <laughs> um, or do trainer workouts. And so that still feels fine. N still have not had to adjust my bikes. That's cool, like didn't have to raise my handlebars. My belly is starting to touch the the nose of the saddle on this bike, on my cross bike, which I was riding the other day because I was leaning forward and I was like, wait a minute, what's that feeling? Oh, it's the nose of the saddle on my belly, <laughs> which I just laugh and think it's funny at this point. Uh, and then the biggest changes were in the lifting. The lifting um, deadlifts to the floor, no longer, no deficit deadlifts, no deadlifts to the floor. My back, I felt like I couldn't really fully support properly. Um, and I was getting some back pain and I just was like, 
is the back pain because of the lifting and so I made some changes and I found out trial and error yep it was because I was probably going too deep and not having the proper support from my core so now I just lift the bar a little bit so I don't go full range of motion limited range of motion um, and then snatches anything like all the way up overhead it's the travel it's supposed to like you know stay cl if you're doing Olympic lifting you you know this already it's supposed to stay close to your body. I can't do that because I've got this big belly, which is the same color right now as the couch. There you go, now you can see it. I got this huge belly in the front, so I can't pull the bar straight up. So I don't, I just don't do it. I change the movement and do something else. Squats are great, deadlifts are great, lunges are great, uh, uh, strict overhead press. What I mean, I can do lots of other movements that don't involve uh, full tr fully traveling up the front of my body. So I guess how I would translate that is if you have to change the form, change the move. Unless it seems, unless you're working with someone who is a professional and says, oh yeah, this is totally safe to do it differently. But if you know you're not doing it properly anymore, why force your body to continue doing it? That's it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I really modified. As far as cycling goes, Still rode on the street, you know, helmet, lights, all the things. I raced cyclocross in my second trimester. That was great, felt great. Still managed somehow to finish third place. Ah, five laps. And uh, my nipples felt like they were on fire from lap second, the second lap on. And I debated stopping to put some Vaseline on them. Yes, this is part of my life now, but I didn't. And then mountain biking, still mountain biked. I just stayed off like the sketchiest of trails. Like I didn't try any new tricks. He was looking for a life that would give him the feeling of being worthwhile. Hell yeah! So that's it. That's how I modified and changed anything during my pregnancy. And now I am very, very near the end. And there's gonna be a baby here any day now. And oh my gosh, my house is a mess. We're not gonna talk about it. Um, we're still doing renovations. <sighs> it's gonna be okay. We're gonna be fine. I'm really excited though. I am so excited. And I can't wait to introduce you to my new kiddo. Kid not stop. Kid, kid not stop, you get it? Well, one last thing. I put this on my Instagram, but I want suggestions for events that I can sign up for at late May, June, July, August to come back to cycling. I don't want to race competitively right away. I just want to sign up for something that's going to make me get back out there. I'm not trying to do any high altitude craziness. I just want to get some fun events on the calendar to get back into it so that I can get into the crazy stuff later next later this year. All right, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe and click that notification bell so that you know when I post a video once every couple months. And thank you so much for watching, bye.